in this lecture we are going to discuss anti reflection coating anti reflection coating is a direct application of the interference of light and this these anti reflection coatings are used in the lens of a camera in order to avoid the excess reflection of light from the lens surface now let us look at the construction of anti reflection coating usually the lens of camera is made up of glass suppose this is the surface of glass for glass you know that refractive index mu is roughly about 1.55 <clears throat> then over the surface of this glass a very thin layer of a material called as magnesium fluoride mgf2 is deposited such that the refractive index of this mgf2 is about 1.38 which lies between the refractive index for air and glass refractive index for air is 1 while the refractive index for glass is 1.55 and the refractive index of mgf2 is 1.38 which lies between that of air and glass <coughs> further the thickness of this film of mgf2 is selected in such a way that it is equal to lambda by 4 where lambda is the most sensitive wavelength to the human eye it is about 5500 angstrom minute divided by 4 now with this as a normal let us assume that a beam of light ab is incident with some angle of incidence say i then on reaching at this point b part of the incident light is reflected and emerges out as ray 1 part of it is refracted through the film of mgf2 with some angle of refraction r say along bc on reaching at this point c again part of it is transmitted part of it is reflected say along cd on reaching at this point d again part of it is transmitted say along dr2 part of it is reflected and further it is transmitted and hence we obtain rays in the reflected system as br1 and dr2 these are the rays which seems to be such that they are reflected from the film while we obtain rays like c and if i name these as ct1 and dt2 then ct1 and et2 dt2 these are the two rays which seems to be such that they are transmitted through the film of mgf2 <coughs> now they will, since the rays in the reflected system as well as transmitted system as they are obtained from the single incident source and therefore they are coherent in nature <coughs> so since they are coherent in nature they will interfere either constructively or destructively depending upon the part difference between them and therefore in order to find out the part difference in case of thin films we have done the procedures like uh, before in case of we have discussed in case of thin parallel sided film we draw a perpendicular from this ray dr2 on the path of ray dr1 so that paths traveled by both the rays beyond this perpendicular are same and therefore part difference is path bc plus cd minus path bm in air but here there is no need to do all such procedures because the rays they emerge parallel to each other they emerge very close to each other and since the thickness of the film of mgf2 is very small which is lambda by 4 where lambda is 5500 angstrom minute so 5500 angstrom minute means 5500 into 10 raised to power minus 10 meter which is a very small thickness and therefore the optical part difference will be equal to path bc in film plus path cd in film <coughs> this is roughly the optical part difference for the rays in the reflected system and this path bc is nearly equal to the thickness of the film so since path bc is nearly equal to thickness and you know that thickness is equal to lambda by 4 so path bc is equal to lambda by 4 path cd is equal to lambda by 4 and therefore optical part difference is equal to lambda by 4 plus lambda by 4 which is equal to lambda by 2 now let us see that is there any additional part difference of lambda by 2 due to the rays which are reflected from the denser medium <coughs> because if you recall uh, that in previous lecture we have discussed some important results in optics and those important results are if the, there is a phase if uh, if the light is reflected from the surf, uh, from the denser medium then there is a phase change of pi and that phase change of pi will always corresponds to a part difference of lambda by 2 so here 
if you look at the ray, <coughs> ray AB is incident from air and it is reflected from the film of MGF2. Film of MGF2 is denser as compared to that of air. So this reflection takes place at the surface of denser medium. It means that ray BR1 will undergo a phase change of pi. And you know that a phase change of pi will always correspond to a pi difference of lambda by 2. But what about this ray? That is dr2. Here, this reflection, that is bc, bcd, this reflection, it also takes place at the surface of denser medium because this reflection takes place at the interface between the film of MGF2 and glass. Here, the glass is denser as compared to that of MGF2, and therefore, this reflection also takes place at the surface of denser medium, so it will also undergo a phase change of pi. And hence, the phase difference between the rays in the reflected system being zero, as the phase difference is zero, so the, there is no corresponding part difference. The corresponding part difference for this phase difference will also be zero. And therefore, the effective part difference, the effective part difference will remain only as optical part difference, which is equal to lambda by two. It means that the optical part difference or the effective part difference between the rays in the reflected system as it is equal to lambda by 2 which is odd integral multiple of half the wavelength it means that it will satisfy the condition for destructive interference if it satisfy condition for destructive interference it means that the rays in the reflected system will always interfere destructively to produce darkness it means that no light is reflected from the lens of the camera but maximum light is transmitted through the lens of the camera and that is what is our purpose of anti-reflection coating that we don't want that light to be reflected from the lens but maximum light should be transmitted through the lens of the camera which is necessary for the production of good quality film. So this is the direct application of interference of light and the rays in the reflected system, they always interfere destructively to produce darkness just because of the two important facts that we have selected this material, MGF2, which has the refractive index which lie between that of air and glass and we have selected the thickness of the film such that it is equal to lambda by 4. <coughs> Keep these two points in mind so that <coughs> you can write down about the anti-reflection coating.